So today I would like to talk to you about a very important concept in iron metabolism uh, which is called transferrin, transferrin saturation. So we just put it transferrin saturation, saturation, right. So what is transferrin saturation? Now first thing to understand is if you look at the, the word transferrin, it's got the part trans which refers to transport and ferrin referring to iron. So transferrin is the molecule that transports iron around the body and this is important because free iron, free iron is toxic. So we do not want any free iron around the circulation or very little of this because it would potentially damage cells. So if we look at transferrin, transferrin is uh, a molecule um, like this. It's got two seats or binding spots for iron and would carry any iron that comes into the bloodstream. So let's say this is the duodenal cell here. Iron comes in and any iron that comes from the GIT into the bloodstream can then be bound to transferrin. And you can see that either one or two seats can be taken up uh, in the, on the transferrin molecule and then this transferrin molecule will uh, move around the body and go and deliver the iron where it is needed for instance in the bone marrow. It can of course also, let's just draw another one here, it can also pick up iron from the macrophages where iron is often recycled out of old red blood cells so the macrophage can also deliver iron to the transferrin molecule and then this iron will go round and round, be delivered by cells and recycled again uh, from the macrophage. You can get some iron that is non, not bound to transferrin and this we call non-transferrin bound iron or NTBI and this is actually a dangerous form of iron because this iron uh, can cause damage to cells. So why would it be important for us to know about transferrin saturation? Well, transferrin saturation can tell us whether there is too little or too much iron going around in the body. And this can be very helpful um, to diagnose certain diseases. So normally when you uh, look in textbooks, you will see that they talk about transferrin saturation as being the amount of, of iron serum iron, which is the iron bound to transferrin, divided by the total iron binding capacity times 100 over 1, which will give you a percentage. So let's just put percentage up here because this is how it is uh, expressed. So you can see that you need to understand what this total iron binding capacity is to understand uh, what would influence the final calculation. So in terms of total iron binding capacity, I'd like you to think for a minute about a, um, a city with many buses. So let's draw some buses here. Okay, so there's, let's say this is a bus and in the bus there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seats. And there may be another bus there. Whew, you can see the buses here. In this city looks very different from each other. Let's take another one here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we look at this, you can just see that um, we've got three buses, each have 10 seats, and in total there would be 30 seats available. So the capacity of the bus service to carry passengers, if there are only three buses, would be 30. So 30 passengers can be carried in the bus service of the city. And then of course one can say, okay, so how many people are actually on the bus? And let's say we've got one person there and another person there and another person there and another one there and another one there and so on. So we can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's make it eight, nine, 10 seats are taken. So 10 
seats out of the available 30 um, are taken. So we can say the bus service is 30% or one third saturated with passengers. Now in iron um, transport it's very much the same except that the transporter that we talked about which is now transferrin has two seats but some of these transferrin molecules um, may have only one seat filled some may have both seats filled and others may have no seats filled but if you calculate all the seats that are taken together one can see here that will give you serum iron and if you look at the capacity in other words how many of the these molecules are there available to carry iron like in the bus service there um, plus the number of seats on each molecule which is fixed only two seats per molecule then you get the total iron binding capacity which actually tells you how much iron can be bound by the total iron transport service which in this case is transferrin so this, if you, if you look at it this way, the, the total iron binding capacity reflects thus, just like the bus service, the number of seats, number of seats, which is fixed, two per molecule, and the number of transferrin molecules. So in other words, when we think of transferrin saturation, one can see that it will be determined by the number of seats taken and the number of transferrin molecules that are available. So I'm going to rewrite this just to make the whole um, thing easier to understand. So we will rewrite this um, formula as transferrin saturation, transferrin, and we'll abbreviate it like this, sets more or less equates serum iron over transferrin molecules. Anything thus that will, eat, will affect serum iron will change this and anything that changes transferrin will change the transferrin saturation. So for instance I can um, quickly show you Li the liver is responsible for producing transferrin. So if you have liver disease the transferrin will go down. There will be less transferrin produced and if that is the case then the transferrin saturation value iron over transferrin will go up so the saturation is now increased and this is exactly what we see in patients with liver disease um, i'm going to draw it in the middle the transferrin saturation can potentially be low normally transferrin is about 30 percent uh, saturated or somewhere between 20 and 50. that would be the normal value for most laboratories but it may vary a little bit so anything that is below 20 would generally be considered uh, as too low, but this may vary. We said that anything that will either decrease serum iron or increase the transferrin will decrease the saturation, the decreased transferrin saturation. And some examples of this, and you will see how easy it is to understand now, would be iron deficiency anemia. This is very common. So if you lose iron through bleeding, so let's draw some, some blood drops here. Let's say you are losing blood, then you are losing iron. And if that is the case, the iron here will decrease and that will lead to a lower transferrin saturation. Interestingly enough, in iron deficiency anemia, transferrin increases the body actually tries to compensate by increasing the transferrin production which further decreases transferrin saturation so iron deficiency anemia either from bleeding or from decreased iron intake will lead to a lower transferrin saturation another very interesting one and this this will help you a lot because anemia of chronic disease is sometimes a difficult concept to to understand and to remember what happens exactly with the iron parameters here um, and I'm quickly going to, to, to show you by example of anemia of chronic disease caused by infection microorganisms especially bacteria depend on iron for their growth so if there's a lot of iron available in the circulation these bacteria can grow and become more 
So what the body does to prevent this is it tries to keep the iron away from the microorganisms by locking them, locking the iron up within the cells that normally contain them. So this would be the duodenal cells where iron is absorbed and the macrophages um, where the recycling of red blood cells take place. And you will remember from one of my other videos that iron, when it is absorbed, comes into the bloodstream through a molecule called ferroportin. Ferroportin literally meaning iron door. It gets out through ferroportin and what the body does, it produces by the liver again, interestingly, a molecule called hepcidin, hepcidin or some people would say hepcidin. And hepcidin or hepcidin basically uh, inhibits the ferroportin and iron cannot get into the bloodstream. So the serum iron, serum iron will now decrease and not be available to microorganisms and thus the transferrin saturation will also decrease because of the serum iron that is lower. Now when we talk in another video later about serum ferritin you'll also understand now that if the iron is remains inside cells not only here but everywhere then the ferritin will be increased because there will be more st storage iron and the liver also produces more ferritin the storage form of iron uh, in anemia of chronic disease so then you can quickly work out that with anemia of chronic disease serum iron will be low transferrin saturation will be low and ferritin will be high while in iron deficiency serum iron will be low transferrin saturation may be low and ferritin is usually decreased because there's a little iron to be stored so that's another nice one to remember. If you have anything that would affect this ferroportin molecule such as a mutation, there's for instance a mutation that would affect the ferroportin molecule so that iron that is recycled by the macrophage from red blood cells can't get back out into the circulation. It's sort of stuck in the macrophage. Now that kind of ferroportin mutation, let's just write that here, ferro, ferroportin I'm just going to say mutation or mu um, will also lead to a decreased uh, transferrin saturation because there's little serum iron available. Now there are some conditions that could change the transferrin and actually cause the liver to make more transferrin molecules. And this happens, for instance, in pregnancy. So let's just write the pregnancy or hormonal contraceptive therapy. So in both these instances, transferrin uh, production would increase and this would cause a relative decrease in transferrin saturation. On the other side, one can have an increase in transferrin saturation. Now, normally we would say a transferrin saturation above 50% would be abnormal, at least in females and certainly above 60% in males. And therefore this uh, any value that is usually higher than 45%, some books would say 50%, um, would be a reason to screen a patient for conditions of iron overload. And it's usually when this uh, transferrin saturation goes above 60% that one sees this non-transferrin bound iron appearing in the blood, this toxic iron that we do not want, that will be damaging to cells. So when will this happen? Well, um, there's a condition which is not that uncommon actually called hereditary hemochromatosis whereby people are born with a, a genetic abnormality that leads to increased iron absorption. So the iron absorption increases uh, greatly and therefore the transferrin saturation will go up. The same is true for transfusion related iron overload. So every unit of blood, so let's give this patient a transfusion quickly, so let's say this is the blood bag and we connect it up to the patient. Each unit of blood contains 250 milligrams of iron. That's quite a lot. If you think about it, you only absorb normally 
one to two milligrams per day. So one unit of blood gives 250. Examples of this would be patients who are trans chronically transfusion dependent, such as those with aplastic anemia, which is right, a, a, aplastic anemia or myelodysplastic syndromes. There are many, many others. Um, diseases that cause bone marrow failure typically and which requires long-term transfusion support. There are also conditions that lead to ineffective, ineffective erythropoiesis. So a lot of activity is happening in the bone marrow to try and make red blood cells, but it's not very effective. And when this happens, the bone marrow sends a signal. Let's just try a signal whereby absorption is increased. And conditions that we think of here would be things like thalassemia. I'm just going to say thal, thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia. There's something called black fan diamond anemia, which is a congenital condition, and many others whereby there's ineffective erythropoiesis leading to increased iron absorption, increased serum iron, and an increased transferrin saturation. You can, you can imagine that, of course, any patient or any person who's taken an overdose of iron, which is very toxic, can also develop a very high transferrin saturation because now they have taken in huge amounts of iron and all these seats will be filled. Similar to what we saw on this side with pregnancy and contraception leading to an increase in transferrin by the liver, liver disease, which is right here, liver disease, can of course lead to liver failure or just a decrease in the production of transferrin. There's a very rare but interesting condition whereby antibodies can be made against uh, transferrin molecules which leads to the destruction or the removal of these molecules and because there's there are very few molecules around there will be very few seats around so transferrin will again decrease and the transferrin saturation will increase so in summary it is important to know about transferrin saturation because it tells you when it's very low that one should consider conditions like iron deficiency or anemia of chronic disease and some others. On the other hand, an increased transferrin saturation is also very important because it may indicate iron overload, which is a very important condition to, to recognize because it is usually something one can treat very well. So I hope you enjoyed that. In some other videos, we will talk about other laboratory parameters by which we can determine iron status, um, which will complement the video you saw today. But transferrin saturation is such a commonly used uh, marker that I think it's important that every medical student or every doctor knows how to interpret it.